Well, lasers can do all kinds of cool stuff, but what I want to talk about in this video is whether or not they really make sense for us as leather crafters to have in the shop. You know, as lasers are coming way down in price, getting smaller in size, they're getting just better in their capabilities and even easier to use. The wheels start turning for us as leather crafters. You know, we start thinking, well, what, what can they do for us? Can they engrave uh, and personalize projects? Can they cut leather? How thick can they cut? What kinds of leather, you know, can they help in patterning and prototyping and things like that? So that's what I want to explore in this video. Here I have an X-Tool D1. It's a 10 watt diode laser. But what I want to really focus in on in this video is, you know, is it a practical tool for us in the leather shop? What's it good for and what's it not good for? The first thing we can do, I'll just show you the, the basic software that this one comes with. Say we want to make a hat patch, you know, something you can sew on a hat. So in that case, we'd want to engrave our logo on it and then cut it out. So we'll just jump to the software here and we'll create a rectangle, drop our logo in the middle, and I'll show you how simple it is just using the, the native software that this comes with. It's called LaserBox Basic. But first of all, I got some three to four ounce veg tan leather. Vegetable tan leather tends to cut the best um, in my experience and from what I've heard from lots of other people too. So that's what we're going to start with. Later on, we're going to cut some other stuff and just sort of compare it. But let's start with this three to four ounce veg tan. And we'll throw it in here and jump to the software. I'll just kind of show you how I would lay it out and we'll cut it out. So we'll start by importing our logo. Oh, let's pick this one and just drop it in there. And the measurements here are, are all in millimeters. So this is 200 millimeters wide. So we'll just change the dimension here to about 50 millimeters wide. That's two inches or so. And um, so we'll click on this and then over here on the right hand side in the bar, there's a few options. Thankfully, there's not many. It keeps it pretty simple. We're going to go to leather. And, you know, I, I just have selected the default and it works really pretty well. So I'm going to leave everything just as they are. And so this is set to engrave. You can see this is orange and the logo is orange. So it is set to engrave. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Now we're going to take, uh, go come find a rounded rectangle and drag it around the logo. And if you kind of drag yep they kind of snap together so we'll make sure that our box is selected now i'm going to change it to cut so over on the right side change it to cut you'll see the box turns purple and i'm going to just leave everything as it is again so this is set to cut around the outside and engrave in the middle what i will do first though is to just tape this down so the one problem we might have sometimes is the leather doesn't want to lay flat so i'm just going to tape down the edges so it lays a little bit more flat We have to turn the laser on. It's going to make a little bit more noise here. We need to focus the laser now before we do the cutting. So that's meaning to set the distance from this to the leather. And so there's this handy little arm that folds down. And then a little nut on this side. So we're going to loosen that. And just let it come down until it touches. And then we tighten the nut. Fold the arm back up. So then it's set and the focus is uh, theoretically on. I'm going to jog it over here. And so it's basically centered. So I'm going to hit start. So I'm going to do the framing. Make sure that it's just going to be all on the leather there. That looks pretty good. So let's hit start and watch it go. So that looks to me like it didn't quite make it all the way through. So I'm going to just do one more pass. I'm going to select the, the cut line and just ask that to, to go one more time around and that should cut all the way through. So I think this looks pretty good. There is, um, you know, the black edges of course, that's unavoidable with a laser. And you see that kind of smoke, that char on the top. If we were to put some of this masking tape on top of there and then engrave right through it, usually that's much better. We can just peel the masking tape off at the end and you don't have that black smoke on the top. So um, so I did do two passes on here. Um, so if you get cutting your leather, you can do some test cuts and get familiar with how, the, how your particular hide is cutting. You might need to slow it down. You might need to go to two cuts, two passes. 
So speaking of which, let's try some thicker leather. So this is three to four ounce, and let's go to some six to seven ounce, maybe some eight to nine ounce. We'll go head to head and see how many passes and how cleanly it cuts through those kinds of leathers. And then after that, we're gonna go to some other kinds of leathers like some chrome tan leather. So what we've got here is some veg tan leather all lined up. This is sort of the battle royale down from the thinnest to the thickest. We've got four to five ounce all the way up to eight to nine ounce. And then here we have some five to six ounce Dublin from Horween. So I like to use this leather. It's actually a vegetable tan leather, but it's got a waxy finish. Um, and then this one is a Horween Chrome XL leather, also in five to six ounce. It's a lot more oily and waxy. So I would expect that kind of from going, going in, this, in this direction, uh, these might cut most east, easily. Of course, we'll wear our safety glasses this time. So I'm just gonna make a line across here. We'll start with one pass, see what it cuts, and then keep going until, you know, maybe we can get through all of them. We'll see what this laser can do. All right, so we saw that the four to five ounce was the only one that cut in the single pass, but all of these others, besides the Chrome XL, cut in two passes. This, I, I kind of lost track. We'll have to watch the replay, but I think it was five passes to get through the, the Chrome XL. So and it makes a lot more smoke and stuff. So that's something to consider. Definitely sticking in the, uh, you know, whether it's a bridle leather or a harness leather or just straight tooling leather like this, veg tan tooling leather. I think that's uh, probably a pretty good way to go if you're gonna think about cutting leather with your laser. So speaking of all the smoke and exhaust that comes off as we cut on our leather, now's probably a good time to talk about getting rid of that exhaust and how to sort of uh, stay healthy as you do this. So I don't normally use this laser up in this shop. I use it in the garage where I leave the garage door open and I have fans blowing to get the exhaust out of there. Right now I'm taking one for the team and making some smoke and it uh, doesn't smell so good in here, but it's winter in Montana and it's really cold. So I'm not gonna leave the windows open tonight, but I'm gonna go to bed pretty soon. So I definitely recommend doing it in a well ventilated area if you don't have some sort of exhaust hood or something that you can get the exhaust out of your work area quickly. All right, now let's talk about a little more practical situation. So um, I usually draw my patterns by hand on paper and cut them out. And this is kind of what I use for prototyping. So I made a, a reading glasses case and now I want to digitize this because maybe, you know, maybe someday I want to have a clicker die made or maybe I just want to have a more robust pattern, maybe made out of like thin plywood just so that the pattern doesn't get destroyed over time. Um, recently, some good news is that Xtool, who, who makes this laser, updated the firmware so that it works with Lightburn, which is pretty much the industry standard. So, and Lightburn does take PDFs as well as a bunch of other file types. So I dropped that, the file, the PDF straight into Lightburn and it's, it works beautifully, right, to scale, and you have a whole lot more control over how the how the, each operation is handled, um, both in the cutting and the engraving and things like that. So it's a really powerful program. There's a free month trial, and then after that it costs money, but I think it's probably well worth it if you're gonna be doing a lot of this. And let's actually cut it out of leather, and one reason I might wanna do that, in addition to just you know production, this is pretty slow for production, but you could use it for that, um, but if we're going to send this pattern off to a die maker to have a clicker die made, you'd want to make extra sure before it gets sent out that everything is just perfect. So this is an awesome way to do that. If this works, you can be pretty sure that the, the dies are going to work well too. So this is a good way to proof your die before you send it out and tweak any final things before, uh, before you actually send it out. So I also want to mention that Xtool was kind enough just to send me this laser. They asked if they could just so that I could use it and review it. And so I'm um, very grateful to them for that. Um, so factor that into uh, you know, how you wanna take my, my review and my two cents here, but I can assure you that it's an honest, uh, honest review. But as far as the ease of setup and the, the ease of use, you know, I've never actually used one personally before. Anyway, it was super easy to set up. So um, hopefully if you've had been intimidated by lasers in the past and things like that, this is a pretty simple setup and probably one that um, would be a, a good introductory uh, setup for sure. I'm going to change the camera angle here. All 
All right, so let's check it out now. See if it, oh yeah, well. So there it is. Of course, the, the edges are black. Looks like it got all the way through the holes there. They just drop right out. So we're looking pretty good here. You can see the, the engraving there. Looks pretty nice. So let's say I wanna take this pattern and let's cut it in some plywood first. And that could serve as a more robust pattern that we could use in our shop, you know, and not get too dinged up over time. All right, so I've got the plywood in here. This is 1 8 inch plywood, three millimeters. And I changed the speed a little bit, again, based just on the default setting that comes in the LaserBox software. I just uh, adapted that here into Lightburn. So let's try the same thing out and see if we can make a nice wooden pattern. right out so you can little holes you know got knocked out so that's good so anyway that's a real useful little pattern if you never intend to take this on to like a clicker die a wooden pattern is going to hold up a lot better than a cardstock pattern so that's pretty cool so i think i mentioned that this is a diode laser and that is uh, in contrast to some of the other popular ones you might see which are co2 lasers so this one is a it has two five watt diode lasers in here that focus together to make 10 watt as i understand you can get this in different wattages you'll find different wattages if you look at the co2 lasers um, they're a whole different animal and often they are better at uh, well they're probably faster can cut thicker stuff and things like that um, probably better on things like uh, glass and, and stuff like that but um, this definitely has, has its applications. It just may not be quite the workhorse that a CO2 laser would be. So to recap, we know we can cut some leather. Veg tan works best. We can cut wood. We can't cut acrylic. I did try that. Acrylic templates would be really nice to make. This does not do so well at that, at least not right out of the box. A CO2 laser would be better for that. I did not try Delrin. Sometimes people make Delrin stamps for embossing leather uh, on a laser. Not sure if this one would work. I know a CO2 laser works well for that. Also rubber stamps. I did try a little piece of a rubber stamp. That would be really cool to be able to make a, like a logo stamp uh, out of a rubber stamp pad. It seemed to work okay. I didn't run the whole program on it, but that's a possibility. So you can investigate that. But for quick prototyping, some small production, although this is slow, I think it's a useful tool. And just for proofing your designs before you send them out to the die cutter. Those are some real applications that I think something like this could be useful for as well as just monogramming, personalizing things. You can do pictures, you know, of your dog or something on a piece of leather or wood. And I hope this has been a helpful video for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.